Your daddy's gonna play with you. Look, peekaboo. I saw my husband, who was supposedly on a business trip at the park in the neighboring city. He was with a woman, holding a baby. The woman had her back turned towards me, so I couldn't see her face. She surprised me by saying something completely unforeseen. The little one looks just like you. Look, even the smile is just like yours. Aw, that's sweet. But she didn't need to copy my dark circles. <laughs> the baby, looking about 10 months old and held in his arms, definitely looked a lot like him. It hit me then. He betrayed me and our daughter by having another child elsewhere. I thought to myself to never forgive him for that. I made a solemn vow to take him down. Woo, up a pie. I came up behind him, who was joyfully lifting the baby, and said, Shall I throw you down low into a fiery pit of hell? I'm Angela Wilson, a 33-year-old mom and a grade school teacher. I've achieved my childhood dream career and dedicated myself to working hard every single day. When I approached my late 20s, I didn't even have a partner. I whined to my high school friend, Yasmin, about it. I'll hook you up with one of my friends. He's a really nice guy. Really? That'll be great. I was introduced to Trent, who later became my husband. He was a temp worker at the time. With his curly hair and fair complexion, he looked adorable when he smiled and was incredibly gentle and sweet to me. I was instantly drawn to him and we started going out. A year into our relationship, he popped the question. Even though I was a bit concerned about his unstable career, I still wanted to be with him. So I said yes. His parents gave us their blessings, and the next step was to share the news with my family. My dad, Henry Motor, is the founder and CEO of a moderately sized company. He single-handedly raised me after my mom passed away due to illness when I was in middle school. When I introduced Trent, he kept squinting his eyes, trying hard not to tear up. I can't believe you're getting married. I'm so happy about it. Then Trent came clean to him. But I'm ashamed to tell you that I'm a temp worker. I intend to do my best to make Angela happy, but... Don't worry about that. I'll introduce you to someone I know. Really? Thank you so much. I mean, hiring you at my company now might look like favoritism, but someday you could take over my position. Until then, learn as much as you can at my friend's company. That's more than I could ask for. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our marriage and Trent's securing a full-time position happened effortlessly. I sent a message about our happy news to Yasmin. I heard she had moved, so I wanted to get her new address for sending a wedding invitation, but she never replied and just disappeared. Later on, we rented an apartment halfway between our workplaces and moved in together. Everything was going well until I found out that Trent had almost no practical life skills. He couldn't cook, clean, or even operate the washing machine. He'd leave clothes scattered on the floor after taking them off and wouldn't bother to clear the table after meals. Since I also worked, I asked him many times to help with housework, but he had the nerve to say, Isn't that the wife's job after getting married? It's audacious to ask me to do it. I was speechless by his backward mentality. No matter how much I talked to him, he had no intention of improving his mindset. About a year into that kind of marriage, I found out I was pregnant. Trent was thrilled and wondered, Will it be a boy or a girl? With eyes sparkling. However, when my morning sickness started, he never lifted his finger to do the chores. Despite my dissatisfaction, I had to push myself to manage everything at home. Eventually, I gave birth to a healthy girl, whom we named Maya. He took a couple of weeks off from work and stayed home, but as usual, he didn't help me with anything. While he happily held our daughter, cooing her, when the diaper got dirty or she cried, he immediately passed her to me. She must be uncomfortable with a wet diaper. Change it for her. 
Ew, that's gross. I don't want to do it. Fine. Can you vacuum then? Ugh, such a hassle. I don't even know how. Why don't you do it? He didn't even try to learn housework or even childcare. I was physically exhausted post childbirth and sleep deprived due to nightly breastfeeding. While I was running around like a headless chicken, he just hung around at home glued to his phone. Sometimes he'd disappear somewhere and not return for the whole day. I wondered why he took the leave from work. I was upset, but couldn't vent my frustrations to anyone. I missed Yasmin, thinking if she were around, she would have listened to my complaints. She remained MIA, leaving me feel frustrated and alone. Time passed and Maya turned three. I resumed my job as a teacher. At first glance, we might have seemed like a happy family of three, but my dissatisfaction had been building up over time. Trent never changed his attitude towards housework and childcare. Moreover, he claimed his work suddenly got hectic in the last few months and started frequently leaving home. Weekdays were filled with overtime, and even precious weekends for spending time with Maya turned into work days. Since I was handling everything related to her, she naturally became quite attached to me. But still, I told myself that he was working hard every day for us, and I needed to support him. That was how I managed to get through each day. One day, I tried to mend our icy relationship and approached Trent. Honey, I've got something to talk about. Oh no, about what? I'm tired, you know. He replied bluntly, scratching his curly hair. I stared at him with a serious expression. Let's go out next Sunday as a family. Uh, not possible. I'm super busy right now. Got a business trip from Friday. I won't be back till Monday. But you've been spending less time with Maya for a while now. She misses her dad, you know. I doubt that. She's sticking to you like glue. Always mom, mom to you. That's because... As I was about to raise my voice, he cut me off, looking annoyed. I don't want to argue. This conversation's over. Then he promptly went to take a shower, leaving me dumbfounded. Sometime later, I got a proposition from a mommy friend. Her daughter wanted a sleepover with Maya at their place. Why not take a break with your husband once in a while? While smiling wryly at her suggestion, I decided to leave her at her house overnight. Trent was on a business trip, and Maya was at a sleepover. My first free Sunday in who knows how many years arrived. I was pondering what to do when my phone rang. It was my dad. Hey, Angela. I've got some errands in Jersey City today, but my car broke down. Can you take me there? Sure thing. I'll be right there. I picked him up and drove to his appointment. Little did I know my life was going to change big time afterward. After dropping my dad off at his friend's house, I parked the car in a Lincoln Park parking lot. I was taking a stroll in the park, enjoying the beautiful late morning, when I noticed a cheerful family. My eyes focused on the father before my head caught up. That figure. That curly hair. Unmistakably, Trent's. Dad's gonna play with you. Look, peekaboo. The voice belonged to none other than him. I froze on the spot and watched them. The woman had her back turned, so I couldn't see her face. Then she surprised me by saying something completely unforeseen. The little one looks just like you. Look, even the smile is just like yours. Oh, that's sweet. But she didn't need to copy my dark circles, haha. <laughs> the baby, looking about 10 months old and held in his arms, definitely looked a lot like him. It hit me then. He betrayed me and our daughter by having another child elsewhere. I thought to myself to never forgive him for this. I made a solemn vow to take him down. Woo, up up high. I came up behind him, who was joyfully lifting the baby, and said, Shall I throw you down low into a fiery pit of hell? Huh? 
When he saw me, his eyes opened so wide that they almost popped out of his head. What? Angela? At that moment, the woman turned around. I was utterly shocked to see her face. I Yasmin? It was none other than the friend who introduced Trent to me. Seeing my bewilderment, he nervously spoke up. What are you doing here? I gathered myself and glared at him. That's not important right now. Explain what's going on here. W well He was sweating profusely as he held the baby. Before I could press him further, Yasmin took the baby from him. Oops, guess we're busted. Oh well. Why, Yasmin? Tell me what's going on. Tell you what? Can't you see? This is our baby. Anything else to say? She nonchalantly stated, which made my head spin. How long has this been going on between you two? From the start, we hit it off right away. Must be about eight years now. Eight years ago? That was even before I met him. It meant she introduced us while she was involved with him. For what reasons? I asked, and then Trent spoke up. She said if I married you, I could become the CEO. What? Yasmin proudly chimed in. Your father is the CEO, right? He was just a temp worker back then, so I didn't want to marry him. But once he became the CEO, he could leave you for me. Then I become the wife of the CEO. Get it? Until then, I decided to keep a low profile. So was that why you stayed out of touch after we married? Yeah, I didn't want to mess up in front of you. I was thoroughly perplexed and at a loss for words. Then Trent continued. Let's just pretend this never happened. It's better for both of us, right? I need you by my side until I become the CEO. Exactly. It's no surprise that a successful businessman has one or two secret kids. I couldn't believe their shameless, nonsensical statements. The moment I was about to explode, a calm voice echoed. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> Hurry! Trent's eyes widened again. My dad had finished his visit and came looking for me. I explained the situation to him with a trembling voice. With an intense and unwavering gaze, he fixed his eyes on Trent, expressing a mix of anger and disdain. So you got close to Angela to aim for my position? On top of that, you've betrayed her and Maya? Seeing this woman all along and even having a child? <laughs> Hurry, please calm down. There's a deep meaning behind this. Trent tried to explain, but my dad kept glaring at him and started making a call. Once done, he turned to me. Angela, what do you want to do now? <laughs> Divorce seems inevitable. Trent started to panic, hearing the deep word. My dad raised his voice to shut him up at once. Who'd make someone like you the successor of my company? I never want to see your face again. W wait so the talk of me becoming the CEO is... What are you still dreaming about? The talk never happened. Get your head out of the clouds already, you absolute fool. Suddenly, a luxury car stopped at the park's entrance, and a well-dressed man got out. What? Mr. Cavill? It was someone close to my dad and also the CEO of the company Trent worked for. Henry, what's this about? My dad explained the whole drama to him. He's been under your company's care until now, but I have no obligation anymore. Please, do as you see fit. Mr. Cavill's expression turned sour as if he'd just sampled something unpleasant. Oh, I've kept him employed at your request, but truthfully, he's been often late, absent without notice, incapable at work, and causing trouble for everyone around. We can't fire him suddenly for personal matters, but a demotion is certain. W wait Mr. Cavill, please listen to me. I have nothing but contempt for you. The least you can do is apologize sincerely to Angela. With that, he briskly walked away. Suddenly, Trent began sobbing. Can't become the president. Facing demotion at work, I'm done for. I asked Yasmin, who was pale, watching all of this. What made you resort to this? 
Did you enjoy deceiving me? Her eyes filled with hatred, looked straight into my eyes. I never liked you since high school. You were popular and the daughter of the CEO. Nothing but annoying. Is that the only reason? Mm-hmm. I laughed at you behind your back knowing you were clueless. Served you right. I let out a heavy, disdain-filled sigh. I understand your feelings about me now. Aside from that, you better make sure Trent pays up alimony and child support. Huh? Her eyes widened in disbelief and I continued flatly. Whether you two love each other or not, legally, I'm his wife. Knowing that and still having a child, there's no escaping from it. I hope you guys are prepared. You've got to be kidding me. We don't have that kind of money, and with our baby, like I care, I'll take him to court or we'll do whatever it takes. She flinched at my enraged outburst. Suddenly, Trent clung to me. Honey, I messed up big time. It's all been a lie. The truth is, I love you and Maya the most. I'm breaking up with her. So let's start over as the three of us. I'm begging you. Don't touch me. Disgusting. I pushed him away with all my might as he reached out. He fell to the ground, covered in sand, looking pitifully up at me. I'll demand hefty alimony and child support from you. Make sure to pay up, and never show up in front of me and Maya again, you scumbag. Oh no, please. My dad and I had enough of them, and left them both dazed in the park. Afterward, Trent and I got divorced. Due to his limited finances, I received only half the alimony and consented to receive the remaining amount, along with child support in installments. Since he was left with no money and a reduced salary, Yasmin asked her parents for financial support. After our divorce, they got married. She didn't have decent work experience and had been relying on her parents' support. When they discovered their grandchild was born out of wedlock to a married man, they were so ashamed that they severed ties with her. Trent's family was also furious with him, apologizing to me for his actions. He's been demoted with no savings and both of them are disdained by their family. They reportedly fight every day. They still have to raise the child, so Yasmin has taken a part-time job at a supermarket. Trent couldn't bear the rumors of his own doings at his workplace and resigned. He's now back to being a temp worker. Their lives seem quite tough, but I don't sympathize with them at all. I just think it serves them right. On the other hand, I moved near my dad with Maya and started a new life. He loves babysitting her and supports us financially, for which I'm extremely grateful. I'm excited about watching Maya grow up, and I'm determined to live my life with a brighter outlook from here on out.